In this video, we are going to take a look from a radar perspective of the massive violent tornado that went through Mississippi on March 24th, a day that is going to be remembered, unfortunately, in tornado history. This was a very large tornado. It was a deadly tornado. So before we get into that, just want to say that we are thinking about everybody impacted by this devastating tornado of March 24th that tore across most of the state of Mississippi and into part of Alabama in that track from about Rolling Fork through Winona and into Amory and then eventually dissipating into northern Alabama. So we're going to tell this story from a radar perspective as the signatures on this radar are textbook to say the least. And again, was on the ground, at least the parent supercell thunderstorm was in action for a very long time. So we are going to pick this up at 740 Central Time. The banner says live radar. I want to stress again that this is not live. We are looking back at March 24th in the evening. And again, the timestamp is in Eastern Time, so we're subtracting an hour for Central Time. The first severe thunderstorm morning, this was in effect right as it crossed the Mississippi River from Louisiana into Mississippi at 840 Eastern, 740 Central, and it quickly got its act together. There is the first tornado warning of the evening just before 8 o'clock Central Time. I want to zoom you in, and of course, one of the big towns, unfortunately, that you are going to hear, at least the names that you are going to hear, is Rolling Fork. Keep these people in your thoughts. You can already see this big cylinder here. This is the radar technology picking up the rotation. And we're going to go into different radar modes. And I'm going to show you again the meteorology behind this. But here, of course, is Rolling Fork. I'm going to turn on the telestration here. And this is going to be the first city that is up. You can already see here from a radar point of view that little donut hole in the reflectivity mode indicating that we likely have a developing tornado. As I take this further out, you see things get really intense as it crosses Rolling Fork. And you see this secondary cylinder show up. This is the radar now detecting debris. And unfortunately, that is homes, that is cars, that is trees of Rolling Fork. I want to show you another radar perspective. And this is one of the more sobering things that a meteorologist or anybody that is looking at a radar can see. You see this big little color of blue here. This is known as a tornado debris signature right over Rolling Fork. Again, that big ball of blue is the radar being able to differentiate debris from rain and from hail. And again, that is people's homes, unfortunately, as this tornado went through. Again, this is about 8.08 central time as it's moving through rolling fork i want to take this out further and show you again that this thing is still on the ground east northeast of rolling fork and i want to show you this perspective as we get into silver city that is going to be another another town that unfortunately we are now going to know in tornado history and i want to kind of back this up and i want to show you the purple polygons Typically, you see the polygons as being red on a map. If your meteorologist is tracking, unfortunately, a tornado warn storm, it's going to be blinking red. We're blinking purple here, and there's a reason for that. A rare tornado emergency was issued before the, the storm got into Rolling Fork. And what a tornado emergency does is it's that level up of a tornado warning, that there is a large, destructive tornado on the ground moving towards a population and that is what we have here um the tornado emergency in play there it was last night you see the emergency in parentheses and then that was continued as a confirmed tornado uh later on down the line again this is looking back this is not live if you are watching this uh rebroadcast here what i wanted to show you again we're still on the debris detector mode here because i just want to get through and kind of show how violent and how intense this tornado was. Looking at the debris here, and I'm going to bring out the telestrator again. This is where the tornado is, right in here, this little circle. Note, though, downwind towards Winona, that dropout of CC, as we call it, correlation coefficient. We can get into all the technology and how that works at another time. 
but just know these lighter colors here represent that the radar is seeing something that is not highly correlated, so it's not seeing raindrops. This is the radar seeing the debris falling out of the sky in Winona before the tornado even arrived. So there were likely maybe pictures, paper, leaves, twigs, things like that falling out of the sky because the tornado was so violent and lifting uh, things up. We're going to go back to the regular uh, reflectivity mode. I'm going to clear things off. And again, that cylinder there on your screen is kind of marking the spot where the strongest rotation is of the system. So it kind of of the supercell thunderstorm. So it kind of gives us a better view. Another feature here of our radar, and there's a lot going on on this radar. I'm going to turn off the little cylinder now so that we can see things. This is the four panel, so that shows your typical reflectivity mode. It shows the velocity, which is very, very strong. We'll get into that in a second. Um, the debris tracker, again, right on through here. And then, of course, on the bottom right, is kind of taking out all the noise of the velocity and showing where that strong rotation is. When I talk about rotation, this is the telltale sign, again, if you're ever under a tornado warning, you'll see your meteorologist showing you this, that the reds going toward the radar, or the, is the wind going away from the radar, and then the green is the wind going toward the radar. And I'll draw that out here, and the circulation is like this, and right here where the reds are butted right up against the green, that is your tornado vortex signature. So again, the green is the air going toward the red is the air going away violently in this case. So I want to back this up again. And again, this tornado was very, very big. It was very, very strong. Taking this out further, I'm going to bring the four panel back so that we can get a, a better view here of just of all the, the modes that you would be tracking. And you just see again, I'll zoom close in just how intense... Again, the brighter the colors there in that top right portion of your screen shows the intensity. And right down in here, that stripe of brown and yellow popping up, that shows the intensity of this storm. So I want to take you back again to the actual debris or to the actual radar here. You have your textbook, Supercell, Thunderstorm, with a strong tornado in progress. This is going to be at 9 10, 9, 11 in the evening on March 24th. And then we have that strong storm moving through Winona. Again, still with the tornado emergency in effect for Winona. The National Weather Service did a fantastic job doing all they could to get the warning out. Local meteorologists, of course, were on TV at this time. A tornado of this magnitude, even if you do everything right to stay safe with no basements, in this part of the Deep South, unless you have a tornado shelter, it is really, really hard to survive a tornado like this, even if you do everything right. This is no doubt going to be on the upper echelon of tornado ratings. Of course, it started EF0 and go all the way up to EF5. There's a lot of stuff on social media out there rating this tornado already. To be clear, ratings are done post-storm by the National Weather Service. They will have damage crews that go out and survey this damage it really doesn't matter what the ranking is you'll see the damage on the news and on social media that it was catastrophic but this is no doubt going to be rated very very high as this approaches amory alabama might have loose loosened its grip a little bit before it got into amory and then we call tighten back up its circulation. So for now, as we move into Amory, we're going to have to switch radars to the Columbus, Alabama radar. And you can see it kind of get that hook echo look, that textbook look for the first time. We had that supercell kind of, I've called it high precipitation supercell. So it doesn't really look like it's that menacing, at least from a hook echo standpoint. But you saw the rotation. It was strong. But look at this. As I turn on the damage, uh, the debris detector, note that we're not seeing much. 
But watch what happens right before Amory. You're going to see a big blue little blob pop up. And you see the gray sphere. It's the radar. Again, the radar technology. Thinking that there's debris. Well, there it is. Again, one of the most sobering things that you can see. This tornado debris signature. I'm going to pull up my telestrator again. And there it is. Here's 45 Lake Monroe East Subdivision. And then there's Amory. This barreled in right on Amory, unfortunately, right at a, right before uh, 11 o'clock. And you see that debris signature. And I want to show you, I'm going to back this up again just to show you how insane this was. I mean, the debris is showing up on the reflectivity. This is your traditional radar that you're used to seeing on an everyday, everyday life here. But you see that lavender little ball. That's what you call a debris ball. So that is the radar. And you shouldn't have high reflectivity there. You should not have a big, bright lavender ball right there unless the tornado is picking things up. And that is where, again, your textbook tornado sits. Here is, of course, Amory. And unfortunately, as we take this further into the future, went right on through. Again, this is the same storm that started, again, on the Louisiana-Mississippi border and is now getting ready to exit into Alabama. We still have that debris tracker on as we zoom this out for perspective here. If you're not familiar with this area, already, just after 11 o'clock Central Time, we still have that tornado. And as I turn on the velocity mode to show the wind direction here, finally dissipating, at least losing its grip as it moves towards uh, Hackleburg, Alabama. But just look how intense this is. I mean, words can't describe what is going on right now. You can only feel for the people that lived through this last night on March 24th, if you're watching this beyond March 25th. But you see the reds and greens. There is your tornado vortex signature. And again, there is the reflectivity. There is your debris ball. And then this is your correlation coefficient. This is your tornado debris signature. And again, that bright blue to a meteorologist is the debris that is being lofted up. And in some cases, debris was recorded more than 30,000 feet being lofted up into the air. That is how violent this night was for our friends in Mississippi on March 24th. And again, you're going to see the damage as daylight comes out. But again, just an unbelievable evening. Unfortunately, this was expected. This was well forecast, but as mentioned, with a tornado this violent, it is hard without being underground or being in a well-constructed shelter, a well-constructed tornado shelter to survive something like that. So again, we are thinking of everybody that was impacted, but unfortunately, March 24th, 2023 is going to be one of those days that is remembered in tornado history. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, we're thinking about everybody in Mississippi, but I just wanted to tell the story here if you missed this, because unfortunately, we this came at night. And it just highlights the importance to make sure that if you are ever under a severe weather risk, that you have a way to get your warnings if you go to bed so that you are woken up so that you can do your best to stay safe and to take the necessary action. But again, March 24th, 2023, an ugly, ugly night in history. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep the people of Mississippi in your prayers.